You need to see the cards now. And you may have noticed that the zoning of the field may be a little bit different because left-handed players can't watch, switch the zones there. Draw, stand by Memphis. Shimping Zhu starting off the play. Uh, I believe he did win the Dino and I was using to go first. Uh, in response, I'm going to... Normal summon out Snake Eye Ash, the best opening play. And infinite impermanence, which is fantastic. From the perspective of the opponent, this allows him to negate the Ash and not have to worry about a card like Called by the Grave. It also stops the entirety of Ash's effect, at least now, assuming Ash mm -hmm. doesn't hit the field again later in the turn. So we're performing a Link Summon of Link Karibo. Now, because this is pure Snake Eye, there's no Karen to help you know, mm -hmm. mitigate the, uh, the imp impermanence. No, go ending main phase. We're ending main phase. And we're going to pass just a Link Karibo. Well, one of the things about Xu Ping's deck is it is cutting a lot of the sort of generic spell cards that you could play for a lot, and I mean a lot of hand interruptions. <laughs> <laughs> that is more than the average number, that's for sure. And we're going to see a follow-up with Everett, starting with also the summoning of Snake Eye Ash. Over a third of his deck are hand interruptions. A third? <laughs> Over <laughs> the, a third. <laughs> the deck list might as well say monster cards, spell cards, and more hand interruptions. <laughs> and here we see Droll and Lockbird, one of the many hand interruptions. One that is not necessarily the best against Ash alone. You'd rather use something like Infinite Impermanence, because even though we've seen the Droll and Lockbird hit the field, Everett's still going to be able to make a potent field through yeah. Droll and Lockbird. That single Ash, if that's the card that you start with as opposed to, let's say, Bonfire, mm -hmm. it's critical. Now, Shinping here, hand over the mouth. Usually that's telegraphing something, but from what I believe witnessed last week, that doesn't mean anything. It just means they're deep in thought, finding the perfect point to counter. Yeah, if you're playing as a player like Xu Ping, who's been around so long and understands the intricacies, I would just worry about what you have going on, not trying to get any reads about body language. Mm -hmm. Well, that's all the same for Jesse as well, but we're looking here at Shun Ping. Uh, the Linker Rebo has been pushed to the Spell and Trap Zone as a continuous spell card. We're going into Hita. Oh, that is a dangerous card. Remember, in these mirror matches, or mirror-esque matches, the graveyard is more or less shared. And now we see the Flame Burge effect, so he's electing to activate the effect here. Bringing back two level one monsters. Well, these are just tokens. Uh, cool. Uh, yeah, thank you. Oh, on summon thinking. If we could see awesome. a variety of oh, Ooh, Nibiru. That's a great one, especially when Flamberg Dragon already burned the effect to summon out too. This is going to land. Uh, yeah, no I wouldn't cool. count them out so just yet, but also Hita has been used as well, so the follow up really has been cut down. Yeah, Hita, is, Hita is one of the ways that in the aftermath of the Nibiru, you can often reestablish the field by just putting another fire monster and then taking advantage of your opponent's graveyard. So the fact that Hita was destroyed while contributed through the effect of Nibiru can actually hurt Everett's ability to play through the Nibiru. Oh, that is good timing, good timing. So yeah, you can't just three, rush three, into Nibiru. Points. There's so many factors to consider. Um, There's also like the danger of what if they have a Diabell Star to keep going as well. But here we are. You know, we're using the Draw and Lockbird combined with the Nibiru. Now we're kind of stacking it up a little bit. Just really cutting out those lines. What's interesting here is he also has the Link Rebo in the Solid Trap card zone. So he also shuts him off of dark. He sort of on his own shut off dark access. Yeah. <laughs> That's a bit unfortunate. Yeah. And remember, Promethean Princess doesn't require fire monsters to make, so you just want as many monsters as possible. But Shinping getting the turn back. Normal summoning out the Snake Eyes Poplar. Is Poplar going to pop off or are we going to be disrupted? Effect is fine. Effect is okay. And okay. uh, is allowing it to resolve. Now, for this matchup, there's many different cards you can actually... You can go for the field spell, or you can go for original. Yep, and Xu Ping is electing to play both of those. Oh, lots to consider. I mean, the field spell protects you against cards like Nibiru, because you get the additional monster, and it looks like we're going to be using the original Sinful Spoil Snake Eye. Without any obvious ways of special summoning in the graveyard, Besides, obviously, Namir from the hand, but without there being a princess or a Garunix or any of the obvious Activate. ways in the graveyard, maybe he doesn't value the temple as much because mm -hmm. on the field as it's currently constituted, there's no way that he's going to be special summoning besides, of course, Namir, like we just commented on. That's right. And uh, original has been activated. We're going to use that Link Karibo that was pushed to the back as cost and summoning out Oak. Oak having a target in the graveyard, which is going to be mm -hmm. the Snake Eye Ash. Uh, is he going to choose the add to hand or special summon? Seems like it's going to be the summon. Summoning into one of the one of the columns under the extra monster zone. Uh, 
It doesn't look like Xu Ping's playing Relinquished yeah, Anima. No, he's not. He's electing to play the Boral and Dragon combined with the Pentastag. I mean, it kind of just deviates a little bit, but like it makes people feel safe when they're not. Yeah. So here's a card that we're seeing quite a bit this weekend, which is Birch. Any thoughts on Birch? I think if you're going to be playing pure Snake Eye, Birch just provides you with even more ways to follow up. I mean, it is a great card, especially when you're trying to break the board and you're going to be disrupted. The Birch could just summon itself out mm -hmm. just in case you need the additional uh, ways to push. One of the other things I like about Birch is in sided games, a lot of players this weekend have elected to use Summon Limit. And if you don't have Birch in your deck, when you use Ash, your choice is then go into Poplar and then you summon into the field. And then you're unable to then use the Ash on the field to send the Summon Limit to get a Snake Eye out of your deck. With Birch, you can actually search Birch, keep it in your hand, use the Ash on field to send the Summon Limit, and then therefore the second Summon that you're trying to conduct is allowed to resolve, and then you can Summon Birch in the aftermath of that. So it actually mm -hmm. gives you some flexibility inside the games as well. I like that. And uh, speaking of summoning more cards, we have now Snake Eyes, Flamber Dragon Summon onto the field via the effect of Ash. Now, I'm wondering if Everett has additional ways to disrupt this current field. I mean, there is a Flying Bird Dragon on the field. If you want to count monsters, Flying Bird Dragon, just count that as three monsters. Seems like it. It does seem like it. Well, it, it itself, and then the two that it brings back. Plus the one that it eventually gets to the field. <laughs> yeah, also that. that. That's on the following turn. I think with four monsters, this is quite an easy access to over 8,000 damage, but it's at the risk of uh, hit, getting hit by a Nibiru if you do commit without, you know, the proper precautions. Uh, just to clarify, the effect of Flamber to place a monster in the spell and track is not a quick effect. And uh, um, they're just clarifying certain effects that Flamber is not a quick effect to push a monster yeah, into fair. the back. No, However, no, it is a quick no, effect no. to mm -hmm. summon a monster back from the Spell and Trap zone. It could be either no, side. Uh, yeah. Which obviously in these Snake Eye strategies, when it's you know this mirror match, it's, it's quite oh, potent. Yeah. Oh, um, ooh, here we go. This is going to be... Uh, there is the Nibiru. Okay. Um, so that was the danger. But I believe the Flamber has not activated yeah. and we can keep going. I think he was just verifying about the Flame Burge effect just because you could chain it to Nibiru if it was a quick effect, but we would see that interaction way more than we, we do if it was something that worked like that. It doesn't. Chain Link 1 Flamber, Chain Link 2 Poplar. Poplar can put any Fire Monster into the Felon Trap Zone. Sometimes you want that Flamber Burge in the back because you have enough like Snake Eye Monsters and you can use that to pay the cost and then get additional cards. There's a lot and there's multiple Flamber Burges in the Snake Eye deck. I think there's actually a good chance he's going to do that. Oh, no, looks like he's going to go with Ash. Still a great card. Yep, he values being able to potentially summon Ash later on. Yep, and we're going to see Oak and Birch. That's still three materials worth of monsters. I think this might still be in the range. Yeah, it could potentially be. You see, he had to use Nibiru there because it was threatening Apollosa. Mm -hmm. I don't know if he would have just gone, he may have gone at Apollosa there with just four materials on field like that, but I, I don't know if it's a guarantee. So I don't yeah. know if it was a preemptive Nibiru. Well, let's see if Jinping manages to pivot around this Nibiru. Is he paying cost with the Oak to summon additional monster? A Nibiru in defense mode. Okay. Not the strongest. I think just the base stat line of those Snake Eye monsters can defeat it. Yeah, it's even without the field spell. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So we see him now going into his own copy of he looks like a Starlight Rare as well. So that's the timing here. This is the timing that we mentioned earlier when Shinping used the Nibiru. The Hita was not... Basically, we waited for the Hita to be dropped and then Nibiru. Now, because, as you mentioned earlier, now the Hita becomes the follow-up yep. to the Nibiru, and we get to see both sides of the timeline. What's interesting here is Hita reviving Hita now allows him to go all the way up into a, oh. a Link 4 if he would choose to do so. I think there is... An option for the Zalantis. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking here, too. Yeah, so yeah, we take the two, we go into the Promethean Princess Bestower of Flames. That's going to special summon back another fire monster out of the graveyard. We are currently firelocked, but likely going to just get rid of our own Promethean Princess. Without Nibiru as a threat, this opens up a lot of damage. Yeah, I think Shubing's feeling pretty good about this. Seeing that Nibiru hit the field earlier in the turn, now allowing him to use the Hita like you commented on earlier with the Flame Bird. It's really lining up quite well here. It's interesting. Everett definitely seems to have some type of hand interruption. It looks oh. like it's a copy of Effect Veiler. 
That's very good. Stopping the Bestora Flames from summoning an additional monster. Now you do need the additional monster. The total monster, or rather the link material count should be about five to, uh, to execute the Zalantis play. And this might turn him off of that really pivotal single card. Are we going to link away our own Oak? Local. Ending oh, we're main phase. Ending main phase now. Yeah, battle phase. Battle phase? Here we go. The you were commenting on earlier. Yeah. Oak attacking over in Nibiru. Yes. That doesn't seem like a fair fight. <laughs> These all sound like little trees. <laughs> and the tree defeated the rock. I know. Now Prometheus Princess two. attacking directly. I do wonder if he regrets leaving it in defense cost. mode now. Like it cost him an extra card. It also would have forced Chuping to do something totally different. And we are using the effect of the Oak summoning back into a Flamberge Dragon. Now Flamberge can special summon back that Ash and just help recover additional resources if needed. Yeah, like I commented on earlier, he put the Ash there in the Smell and Trap card zone. He valued having the follow up of being able to special summon. Oh, Flamberge effect, we're going to push away the Link Karibo into the Spell and Trap Zone. Oh, wow. Oh, I, I think I know where this is going. Likely, Shinping has some disruption from the hand that requires targeting. If the level one comes down, the Link Karibo would be able to mm -hmm. kind of dodge, and we're just going to answer that right now. Yeah, that's a very astute play then. Oh, yeah. As you mentioned earlier, he does run a lot of disruptions from the hand. Ooh, bonfire. I think this is what he was planning for. Because <laughs> it has to be a level one monster for the Link Karibo, and now that that's not an option, I think Everett has to play into one of those hand interruptions. Poplar has been added to hand. thank you. Very decisive, stating the chain links. It's really important to do that so, so you don't make accidentally make any mistakes uh, with these very complicated here. decks. No response. Mm -hmm. No response from Shinping. Shinping allowing the Poplar to be summoned out onto the field in defense position. Thinking, oh, here we go, Ghost Mourner. Ah, oh, wow, that's going to turn <laughs> off of the Poplar. Ghost Mourner is almost, you know, the seventh, eighth, and ninth copy of Effect Failure slash Infinite Impermanence, if you mm -hmm. would like. It has some interesting applications as a card that could be used during your turn at some specific points. Yep. So it has some value, and the, the burn damage doesn't hurt either. Now, if you look at the current table scores, we have the blue team uh, on ta B on the B players. We have Brandon D taking the first one, as well as Thomas M taking the C table. The first game. So, oh. Okay. Circle of the Fire Kings. Mm -hmm. You know, if you're going to play the pure fire, well, not pure, but if you're going to play Fire Kings with the Snake Eye package as opposed to pure Snake Eyes, this is one of the interesting card choices that you can play. It is another one of the ways of playing through and around cards like Effect Veiler. Mm -hmm. Let's see if Shunping has what it takes to keep going. So, Circle of the Fire Kings chained two. I believe it's this was chained to the mourner. The, uh, the mourner so that we can maximize this. And getting back a fire monster that's going to be really huge, the Snake Eyes Flamber's Dragon. Now he's able to resolve through the Ghost Mourner because it's no longer on the field. So even though he answered the Link Karibo, the additional copy of the Circle of the Fire Kings just as an additional out to this current play. Yeah, it's kind of the opposite of what Shipping wanted and now the original Sinful Spoil Snake Eye is going to put that Link Karibo back into the graveyard, so now it's there to protect. Could you imagine if Shipping's hand is just something like Effect Veiler too? Yeah, that'd be, that'd be insane. Now we're going to see the Fire King engine come online. We have the legendary Fire King Ponyx now summoned onto the field. And Sanctuary. Sanctuary only means one thing. We're going to go into Fire King Island. I'm not sure Shipping knew that Everett was playing any of the Fire King cards based on the opening turn. I don't think I don't he believe so. does, and I think one of the things that it was definitely caught off guard by has to be Circle of the Fire Kings. I don't think this is a common card to be placed in. A lot of people cho chose not to play it. I think maybe after this weekend, yeah. things will change again. I think we're chasing the circle again.
I mean, we just saw here that Chu Ping put more, I don't know if he was playing them last week, but Ghost Mourner is more popular this week than it was last week. Mm, players realizing the value of Effect Veiler and Infinite Impermanence, they're going up to six copies. In addition to that, Ghost Mourner is less likely to be hit by Crossout Designator, mm -hmm. which is a very popular card in a lot of main decks this weekend. As a result, Everett looks at that and says, well, instead of going with Crossout Designator and playing the same hand traps as everybody else, I'm actually going to play a copy of Circle of the Fire Gangs to go along with my oh Kieran to make it so that if you're playing six, seven, eight copies of these targeting Shimmer. effect negation from hand, I'm going to just play around you with the Flimmer circle. Um, yeah. So we're going to use the Flamberge effect and summon out the Ash onto the field. Garunic's effect is likely to destroy a monster from the deck, a fire monster from the deck. And mm -hmm. that's going to be Kieran. Kieran is going to be destroyed. That's, there is a monster to summon that's going to be the Ponix. And then we're going to chain Ash onto that additional effect. And there's a lot of chain links. Shunping's main concern now, surviving the turn. Yeah, he needs to find a way to survive. I mean, the Flame Bird Dragon makes it more likely that that's going to happen. Yeah, after that. But can that opponent, the Everett, the Everett, so push using the Flame Bird Dragon just to get rid of it? Mm -hmm. Well, the fact that it revived the Ash at least gives some defense to, like, as of right now, revived as in returning it from the mm -hmm. Spell and Trap card to the field. One of the at least put a second body on the field. For sure. One of the most crucial things that happened in the past turn was the effect veiler on the Bestower of Flames, preventing the massive damage that would have come down and maybe closed out the game. But right now, Everett is trying to close out the game. Going to Ponix, there is, if we count the amount of materials that we have available, we have the Flamber's Dragon, we have the Garunix, we have the Ponix, and so you just add two to the number here, and we have about five monsters with, the Zalantis is now open for it, and we are gonna push the Flamber's into the back. Now, unlike like old school Telemann play, this is a, a much more fragile end board when it comes to fire. Everything can be broken, and then you can push. And, and it looks like here the push might be enough for potentially game because we just see the Kieran destroy the Ash that was special summoned. Shuping did something interesting, which is a little counterintuitive if you've been familiar with a lot of the cards that have been printed in the last handful of years, which is Ash well. searched a copy of Ash for a potential follow up, mm -hmm. right? A lot of cards have restrictions that they cannot search themselves. That's not the case with Snake Eyes Ash. Yeah. And then he pushed the Flame Burge to the Spell and Trap card zone, like you commented on earlier. Now, remember, Hita has been used, but I think most of the extra deck for Everett is more or less unt uh, basically untouched. It's supposed to be Link Rebo, and this is probably going to be maybe Dark Charmer. It's possible. It's yep. going to be Dark Charmer. We want the additional monster. We want to maximize on the resources. The one monster that we do have, the Link Rebo. And we're going and to use them. Go up to three. So I have to imagine this Promethean Princess Bestower of Flames. What a long name. It's a beautiful looking card though on the new regional top eight mat actually. Mm -hmm. A card that came out in Master Duel first. Definitely interesting, yeah. You don't typically see that. Uh, we see gonna... revive Garunix here. Yep. I think that's enough. Yeah. Three, that, oh, Ooh, <laughs> another mm -hmm. Nibiru comes out. Shunping's holding on. Oh, yeah. Oh, so wow, that's a wonderful minutes. thing. However, there's still the uh, Flamber Dragon follow-up. I believe the Flamber Dragon on Everett's side has not activated in the graveyard just yet, or has it? Yeah, unlike the first Nibiru, I think Everett is in a much, much better position to capitalize. First time, that really shut him down. This time, I think he's totally fine. Yeah, Flamber Dragon can now get the effect that's going to summon two, and then we're going to get a follow-up. But we did see the Promethean Princess already be used. So every single time Shunping drops a Nibiru, he waits for certain crucial cards to be played, activated, and then the Nibiru comes down. So that the follow-up definitely becomes a lot weaker. You can't build as strong. Even if you go back into a Promethean Princess now, that effect is summoned from the graveyard is once per turn. It is, yeah. Great timing. Really, really good timing. Now, is Shinping out of cards? Now, he still has cards yep. in hand. He's Ash. Oh, yeah. Oh. Because he starts Ash on Ash. And once he Ash on Ash, if there is something that he can use, if there's something left in the deck that Ash can summon out, then that Flamber's going to hit the graveyard. Yes, of course. Yeah, so here we are. The, it took a little while. The Flame Birds Dragon got heavy second guessing. Did we already use Flame? I didn't think we did, but we had yet to use Flame Birds. So what I said earlier that he's in a much better shape is, as opposed to just passing, he has those two level ones. There's a lot that he can still do from here. Yep. And I'm wondering if Everett can still land 
into, say, an Appaloosa to follow up, maybe to shut some cards down. But there is still a Nibiru. It needs to be four materials at least. But there's also the Garunix in the Grave. It's not going to be the easiest way to push through anymore, especially with Everett setting up the entire Fire King engine. It is interesting that he already used his Link Rebo because he can't go into SP as easily by turning one of those level ones into Link Rebo. Imagine if that SP landed and got rid of that Flying Bridge on the field. There's still another one in the graveyard because uh, the Shinping plays two. Yes. Good time, I say he won. One more. Good job, Tom. Way Sounds to like Tom has won. Yeah. <laughs> Which is one of Everett's teammates. But they're still in game one over here, so nothing's over just yet. Trying to look and see what Everett can do Andy, specifically with what he has left in his extra deck. I'm going to... This is a very interesting grind game because this is more of a disruption from hand grinding. How much are you willing to commit and push? How much extra deck, like you said, is left for Everett? I don't know. We're going to an IP Masquerina. IP Masquerina, that's for three once again. Now we're going to okay. SP Little Knight. SP Little Knight is going to banish the Nibiru. So that was, a, I would say, somewhat painful SP in the sense that he had to invest three cards into it, even though SP is obviously very potent and powerful. I guess we'll just both let each other shuffle, because, yeah. <laughs> just let it, <laughs> yeah. things saying, like, we probably look through our decks this turn. I searched through Ash, you've searched through quite a few different things. Mm -hmm. We'll just end the turn by shuffling. Now, oh, key pressure here is that it's only an SP. I think Ever got rid of all the fire options. They're going to need something to enable the Fire King line again. Yeah, definitely. One thing here is when he draws, if there's nothing live that he draws, He's going to summon Ash. And it kind of depends if he has a Poplar left in his deck. Uh, Shunping's team a little bit behind here with uh, Table C. Thomas taking a 2-0 victory, and uh, Table B is one game behind already. All right, so he's putting Birch back. OK. I mean, that's, the, uh, that's one, one of the wonderful things about the original Simple Spoil Snake Eye, being able to put back some of your resources, re-enabling some of these cards. That yeah. means there is a target <laughs> uh, for Ash to summon out. Yeah, this is huge. The fact that he had a Poplar left in his deck was massive, because one, he gets to do the banishing effect of original Simple Spoils, and if he chose to start with Ash itself, being able to search Poplar is really important, because you don't want the SP to banish something like, you know, let's say you only had Birch left in your deck. That would be unfortunate, because he wouldn't be able to follow up from there. That's of the right. SP effect. So having Poplar somewhere was really important, whether it was through Ash or with the original Simple Spoils. Spoils. Now there is an infinite impermanence uh, targeting that poplar, negating its effect to yes, add so an additional yeah. card. The, the column is going to be negated as well. So we're going to normal summon out the uh, Snake uh, Eye uh, Ash. All chain SP Little Knight. SP Little Knight has target been activated uh, in response. And the Snake Eye we're going to get <laughs> rid of the Snake Eye Ash temporarily. And, then SP will stay the and we're going to chain uh, the Link Rebo to keep everything you know, sure, online. So the SP is not going to banish because one of the targets was not available. I really love that he put the Burge back into the deck too, so now he can search it like this. He sequenced this turn flawlessly to play around the SP. Absolutely flawlessly. Because he had just opened with just Ash first, then he would have been hit by... Like, let's say he didn't have Poplar in his deck. He would have been hit by the SP, and then the Link Rebound yeah, wouldn't have been any good because Birch uh, wouldn't yes. line up with it. But the fact that he shuffled the Birch back into his deck allowed him to search the Poplar to kind of bait things out, mm -hmm. then following up with Ash, and now the Link Rebound is in a much better place because he still has level one fire on the field. That's right. And now the Birch can be summoned, and he's in a great position here. Where are we going to follow up on this so one now? Uh, IP SP? I think it's still <laughs> up in the air at the moment. Everett's still having the fire line in the grave, if, if he can get access to it, I think that's the hard part. Is there a Kirin in hand and another fire to enable it? Because right now, it, it doesn't seem like there's anything available on the field that we can see that's going to re-enable the fire monsters. No, and now Dark is probably going to let him bring back IP, I presume? Oh boy, IP is probably the best option here. No point not. Yeah, yeah get, get some free protection. I mean, this has been the Battle of the Rocks. We've seen multiple Nibirus come crashing down. Very interactive gameplay in these Snake Eye Mirror matches. Are we going to see his boss monster? I'm thinking, <laughs> I, I didn't want to say it because I didn't want to, <laughs> I didn't want to jinx it, but I really would love to see Boreland. All right, Table B had a score update. Anthony taking the game to one and one. 
and the table A is still 0 and 0. That's important. It would be really disappointing if this game ended without actually seeing the natural. Yeah. Oh, we're going to battle first. Okay, well, the dark is swinging uh, in and 50, pretty hard. 50. Yeah. And then we got IP Masquerina uh, attacking, and likely eight. the uh, Poplar yeah, as well. 35.5. Yep. Yeah. Fire King Island is hmm? still live on the 35. field. Yeah, 35. That could reset up everything for Everett. Going to battle. He, didn't he already use Link Rebo this turn? I believe he did. He did use Link Rebo this turn. He did to dodge I, uh, SP. That's right. Oh, yeah, my bad, my bad. And he realizes it. Yeah, they can't do that. Um, I'm glad they caught that quickly. Moving to I just worked really hard to make sure that. Oh, I believe he wanted the additional damage for the Link Rebo. I mean, I like it, right? Every, yeah. every bit of value really matters. I mean, oh, here we go. We're going to see a special summon out of uh, SP Little Knight. SP1, Poplar 2, target Pop. your item. Yeah, here Pop we go, line. getting rid of that island to cut off some of the possible flexibility of getting access to the Fire Kings in the graveyard. That is crucial. Uh, and Poplar uh, being put into the Spell and Trap Zone. Well, that Sanctuary is still on the field. It can still be used to pay cost if needed. That was a really well executed turn. I think so, yeah. Now he ends with SPIP on field. <laughs> Wonderful. Everett is driving. driving I think that is a top deck. Will he be able to get out of this one? This is a tight spot to get out of. Although I think this is still really good Yu-Gi-Oh! Demonstrated by both of these players. Really shows the intricacies. Oh, well, that's not something you want to see. <laughs> oh. Which, which, which hand it. interruption do you think that one is that he just said? Uh, let's yeah, take a wild guess. I'm droll. going to say, yeah, likely Droll. Okay, I'm going to take a guess. Maybe Effect Failure. Okay, you think it's Effect Failure? Well, no, I guess we'll see once it flips ways up. Okay, looking over his deck, he doesn't have Droll, so I can't... Uh, <laughs> I'm not allowed to pick that one. Okay, pick a different one. I'll just go Ash Blossom. Okay. I mean, it's the strongest defense. It is. And that, if Valor was already hand, that would have been crucial. I mean, one turn too late, is that what happened here? Potentially. Now Shooping has every option he possibly wants. So I presume there's going to be some way he's able to deal 35-50 here on this turn. I think it's really well done, Shinping. No. Sure. Normally we, we did see a drone lock run. Yeah, <laughs> I, I, I knew we would see a drone lock run on the field. Uh, of turn. course, of course. <laughs> are we turning that into a Link Karibo, or are we just going to keep going? It counts for the Link body. Okay, we're going into the extra deck. Oh, two. We're going to Nightmare Phoenix? Oh, that was close. I didn't put the card down. Oh, Selene. I'll summon Selene Effect. Selene Effect gaining a ton of counters, yeah. I think. More than Wait, there's, well, is there's there any three, spells? There's three on the field oh, already. The yes, yeah. three on the field already. That's right. Each of those are continuous spells. There's none in his graveyard. I just, just got a quick glance. We're going to summon back, of course, the Jordan Lockford. That is a spellcaster, not a wing beast. I kind of want to see Everett's whole graveyard because I'm really curious if there's. Okay, they were spells. Wait. Back. Okay. This is insane. This could be it. Now, we have multiple options here. He's, he's kind of deciding, I want this Atlantis, this one. How do I want to end this one? This Atlantis is a pretty good choice. Oh, that is not his IP Mascarena. No, that was almost, that was dangerous if we went to Zalantis and we just gave back an IP Mascarena. Yeah, using those monsters to make us Atlantis. Okay, well, we're going to resummon out the Ash. However, there's no fire monsters on the field. Uh, attack. Yeah, that, over there is fine. That's still going to be some damage. Oh, is that enough damage? No, that, that's not enough damage just no. yet. Nope. So the triggers like the... Um, because they both summon at the same time, right? Oh. Uh, Promethean Princess I, 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 in I, 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 Everett's uh, field. Monsters, well, not field, but in Graveyard. It's not activated because both sides got a lot of special summons. And that gives him back the Fire Monster. Oh no. If only the Ash was summoned face down. Targets are... Uh, targeting Ash and Zelantis. Ash and Zelantis. 
Oh no. Oh no. He allows his Atlantis is now blown up and now there is a very strange card on the field. The if only somebody went over every Zalantis interaction possible before the event. Unfortunately, I think we may have forgotten about uh, the one that really mattered the most. In between, they're either really, really fast or they're going to drag on. I already see a, a Nibiru and Everton, which is a really great card for him to start with. Mm -hmm. Stand by main phase. Yeah. Going to main phase, Shinping. I believe he won the die roll on this one too, and now he's going first again. Normal foot. Normal summoning out. Ash. Not Ash Blossom, but Snake Eye Ash. And it resolves, unlike game one. Maybe there's a follow up drone lock, but we're just waiting for the card to be added to hand to see if ever has a follow up. Nope. Oh, uh, it's one? Yeah. And Pop Large Chain, chain Link one. Okay. So now he's probably going to search out the original Simple Spoils. No, oh, go no, for the Temple. For the temple. Okay, that's interesting. I mean, Temple right here kind of just mitigates the Nibiru in every yeah, hand. For sure. And there's the oak. Bonfire now. Now that everything's been safe, we're not going to see the draw. Bonfire is safe. Get the additional card. Yeah, that's important for anybody who's trying to learn this strategy. If you have Ash and Bonfire, Joel and Lockbird on Bonfire basically ends your turn. Joel and Lockbird on Ash doesn't do all that much. Neither with Poplar either. Yeah, Poplar as well. So you definitely want to be able to sequence these. Really powerful searching effects correctly, and of course, Shuping knows exactly what to do, and he's playing at a nice quick pace, knowing what the time situation here is. And I think starting off with uh, the Flamber Dragon is such a crucial play here. Oh, we uh, use the Oak for cost. Now we're going here into a Link 2. I'm just wondering if Shuping is just baiting a Nibiru. Yeah, we've got multiple cards set up here. There is a possibility that in his hand, he already has a copy of original. Yeah, that would be oh, a great way of playing around the beer. Now, this is summon one, two, three, four. There's at least five summons now. We're going to summon back the Poplar. Everything here is now on the board. And see, the beauty here is if he goes Nibiru, the Flamber. temple is going to allow him to summon the Flame Burge. Mm -hmm. And then that's going to be able to put IP back into the Spell and Travel, to the Spell and Travel card zone, and then summon it on the opponent's turn. So just there, there's a layer, layer of interaction. I love it. I love it. And we're going to be linking off the Poplar and the IP. I think this is the Princess. A lot of discipline there from Everett not to play Nibiru on a field in which Nibiru was viable. Mm -hmm. Princess has landed onto the field, touchdown, and are we going to see in Nibiru? That's just so much patience. What I mean by a viable is any point where Apollosa is threatened mm -hmm. is the sort of the viable situation in which you could be using your Nibiru if you have it. That's right. But he knows that Chuping is a lot that he wants to have going on here, and he's going to hold that Nibiru like to the very last stage possible. But considering that Everett is so patient, this is a Flumber tough spot. This is impressive because now he actually got Flame Burge out of the Spell and Trap card zone. Oh. And the IP Masquerade has been pushed to the Spell and Trap zone. Now the IP Masquerade can still be pushed back onto the field yeah. as long as your opponent summons. Oh, there's double Flame Burge. Now at the moment, we're still a little bit fire locked, so yeah, there's we, no have threat. To, we have to get rid of uh, that uh, Promethean Princess. Oh boy. <laughs> when Nibiru comes down, it's going to be rough. Okay, we have Pyro Phoenix. Oh, it sounds like this match has come to an end. Uh, it seems like the match has concluded. And they're revealing hands. I think this is it. They're all, oh, wow, that is the, one of the best combinations. A Negate plus a Nibiru. Wow, even if he did summon Eplos, it wouldn't have mattered. <laughs> no. Best of luck in the rest of your rounds. Okay. Well, it does seem like the Goon Squad takes this one. Yeah, the Goon Squad don't usually get a lot of Ws. Usually the, the Michael Jordan and LeBron James usually take them down. But, but not today.